kindly uh, put your cell phones in the silent or uh, switched off mode kindly put your cell phones in silent mode or switched off mode the climate is changing so should we director of the institute father dr paul chand and kunal today's expert speaker professor chetan solanki and his team principal dr surendra gode in charge basic sciences and humanities dr dinesh wankhede faculty members and my dear students a very good morning to one and all present here i i atish gore take this opportunity to welcome you all to five point understanding of climate change and corrective actions i now invite father paul and our expert speaker professor chetan solanki on the days i request father paul to welcome professor chetan solanki by offering him a sapling thank you sir thank you father may i now request our director father paul to address the gathering very dear dr chetan singh solangi and his team dr surendra gole our principal dr dinesh wangade the head of the department of the first years and all our professors heads of the department and my dear students i know that you are all excited about this event uh, dr chetan singh solanki popularly known as solar gandhi in india and elsewhere is not an unfamiliar person he is nationally and internationally known figure precisely because of his uh, profile and more so because of the mission that he has taken upon himself dr chetan is a professor of iit mumbai and he has one conviction that we are all heading towards a catastrophe unless timely intervention is made as far as the climate is concerned tremendous changes are taking place because of human carelessness and human beings are responsible to for what is happening today and again human beings alone can take the corrective action this is his contention and in order to communicate this message powerfully to everyone in the country and elsewhere he has set out on a pilgrimage or rather let me put it on a missionary journey criss crossing the country from south to north east and to west last year during his um, uh, missionary journey chetan singh solangi was with us and our senior student had the opportunity to interact with him he is living in a bus and this bus is parked here right in front of this building b block and i am sure you will be excited also to see the bus uh, and even make some pictures uh, with him and we are actually privileged dr solangi to have you with us because you are no ordinary person and we will certainly keep these pictures of which we make together with you and we will say we will with pride that this is dr solangi was in our campus and we even had the opportunity to have a picture with him generations will remember uh, dr solangi for this and i'm sure uh, that his mission is going to have a great impact on um, our country and 
even uh, people outside our country. And uh, you students, you will benefit immensely uh, by this, uh, by the knowledge that he will communicate with you. And I request you to act upon this knowledge and this awareness in wherever you may be, especially in terms of saving as much energy as possible. Energy, energy Swaraj Foundation, that's the organization that he has founded, is not just about producing energy from the solar power, but more so about minimizing the consumption of energy. Put off light when it is not required. Reduce the use of energy as much as possible. I should not give a lecture on this because he is more competent than I am. Please, we will hear it from the horse's mouth. Dr. Chetan, a very, very warm welcome, and we appreciate the great mission that you are undertaking, the great pilgrimage, as it were, that you are on, and we are very happy that you have come to our campus a second time, and may God bless all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Father. May I now invite Ms. Mamta Chabria to give a brief introduction of today's expert speaker, Professor Chetan Solanki. Professor Chetan Singh Solanki. Professor Chetan Singh Solanki is an educator, researcher, innovator, and happiness program teacher of Art of Living who is currently on unpaid leave from IIT Bombay. He has undertaken Energy Swaraj Yatra from November 2020 through a solar bus for 11 years until 2030. In this Yatra, Professor Solanki has pledged not to go home until 11 years and stay in the solar Yatra bus. In the wake of serious and catastrophic climate change, this Energy Swaraj Yatra is designed with the purpose to create a public movement towards adoption of 100% solar energy. He has been honored with the brand ambassador of solar energy of Madhya Pradesh government. Professor Solanki has also been referred to as Solar Man of India by Times of India, The Hindu and India Today. Some people also call him Solar Gandhi. Following Gandhian ideals, he has coined the word Energy Swaraj. And to establish Energy Swaraj globally, he has founded the Energy Swaraj Foundation. Professor Solanki has led major solar projects at IIT Bombay. Through his Souls project, he has reached 7.5 million families providing them clean light. There are several awards to his credit. These awards include IEEE's Global Grand Prize of US $100,000, Prime Minister's Innovation Award for Souls Project, First Prize in Solar Chulha Design Challenge by ONGC, Three Guinness World Records, two Young Scientist Awards, CSIR Science and Technology Award, Top 15 Must Follow three le Through Leaders of LinkedIn, Hero of the Environment by Network 18 Media, Excellence in Reskilling, Outstanding Green Activist, and many more. He has also been invited for talk at global corporations like Google, Intel, and BlackRock. He is the chairman of the committee of CBSC and AICT for solar curriculum development and member of National Focus Group on Environmental Education. Professor Solanki has written eight books and published over 100 research papers internationally. He has four US patents to his credit. During 2019, Professor Solanki traveled across the world covering 30 countries to spread the message of solar energy. In this ongoing Energy Swaraj Yatra, he has already traveled more than 28,000 kilometers, 
reaching about 1,30,000 people across 17 Indian states. The 11 years Yatra is expected to cover travel across the country four to five times. The Yatra aims to bring energy literacy to over 100 crore and encourage over one crore families to switch 100% on solar energy. Professor Solanki has described in his book, Energy Swaraj, my experiments with solar truth, that adoption of energy Swaraj or energy independence should become a public movement. His energy Swaraj Yatra is sowing the seeds for this movement so that we all can create a better and a beautiful world. We welcome you again, sir, to SVPCET. And now I invite you to address our students. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, really my pleasure to be here again, second time. And uh, uh, when I saw uh, Father Paul, it was really, you know, like a feeling of coming home. So thank you so much for a, such a warm welcome. Uh, thanks to Dr. Gole, thanks to all the faculty members, uh, all the students here and my team from uh, Energy Suraj Yatra. I have been going around uh, the country. Now it is my third year that I'm living in a bus. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you regarding this uh, understanding of climate change and how are we going to correct it. But before I do that, uh, let me ask you, how are you all? All fine? What a disaster. What a disaster that you people are fine. I thought when you see a professor from IIT Bombay, you're all going to be happy. I thought the science is growing, technology is growing, economy is growing, you're going to be happy. But unfortunate parties are only fine. But it's not your problem. You know, it's a whole problem of the whole world. You know, everybody seems to be fine. And poor fellows, they remain fine for the whole life. And everywhere it is like this, you know, you ask a thela wala, go and ask, how are you, bhaiya? So he'll say, fine. You come to a college and ask teachers and professors, how are you? They are fine. You go to a very big officer, you know, collector, principal, secretary, secretary, ask them, how are you? They also say, fine. So I feel there is something wrong in this world. Kuch to gadbad hai dunya mein, nahi? Gita says that every single act that we perform in our life, whether we want to look good, whether we want to eat well, or earn good money, good job, good respect, there is only and only one purpose, purpose behind everything, that is to feel happy, feel good, isn't it? There cannot be second purpose. So therefore, I made a rule that uh, I will only talk to people who are happy. So if you really want to listen to me, you have two choices. Either you are happy by choice or you are happy by force. Which one would you like to choose? Happy by, choice. happy by choice. Very nice. Good choice. So let me ask once again, how are you all? Happy. All happy? Very nice. What's the proof that you are happy now? Smile on the face, right? So till I'm going to talk to you, please make sure that you have a smile on the face. You are all going to do that? Yes, sir. Promise? Yes, sir. Wonderful. By the way, I know some tricks how to bring smile on people's face. Would you like to learn a trick? Yes, sir. Very nice. Let's do this. What we are going to do is, uh, we are going to do a small uh, pranayam that brings a smile. You know, have you heard of a pranayam that brings a smile on somebody's face? Anyway, so the name of pranayam is Ashir Chakit Pranayam. What is it? You know that much Hindi, right? Ashir Chakit. So what we are going to do in this pranayam, we are going to feel Ashir Chakit. And when you feel Asher Shakit, what happens? Your eyes open, your mouth open, hands open. I'm going to demonstrate you and you can just follow me. Look at me carefully, okay? Ready? So being Asher Shakit is something like this. <gasps> right? So all of you are going to do this now. And more Asher Shakit you are, more happier you will be, right? So ready? So let's get ready for Asher Shakit Pranayam, hands by the side. Hands by the side. All right? When at the count of three, you have to feel Asher Chakit. 
bigger the better okay ready uh, you don't want to feel happy okay <laughs> all right so ready one two three <gasps> well, good try by the way this was only trial we are now we are going to do five times continuously this is only for trial okay get ready for the asher chakit pranayam five times continuously at the count of three ready one two three 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 wow how are you you like the pranayam i thought you are going to clap for me Well, with this happy note, uh, let me come to a very serious point about the climate change. And I'm sure all of you heard, uh, as Father said, uh, it's not moving. So. Battery is not there. All right. Uh, as father said, uh, I left my home for 11 years. Last time when uh, when I was at my home, it was 2020, and the next time when I am going to go my home, it will be 2031. And I live in a bus. And I keep asking people, there can be only two reasons why somebody will leave home for 11 years. One reason could be that person has gone crazy, the ka screw dhila ho gaya, so abhi ghar gyaare saal ke liye chhod diya. Or there is a genuine reason behind doing it. Looking at me, what do you think? Screw dhila lagta hai? No, thank you so much. <laughs> so that is not the reason definitely. So, but it is a genuine reason uh, that we believe that uh, why we have to do something like this. So my home looks like this uh, and it is outside here. It has a bed inside, it has a kitchen inside, washroom inside, there is a library inside, there is an office inside. There is a small temple inside, also a small garden inside, there is a training room and there are solar panels on the top that is generating enough electricity to run my home, all activities. Would you like to visit my home? Yes. Very nice. So you can visit this uh, after this talk. Uh, before I start talking, I really want to bring this point to all of you that uh, we are all the modern humans. And the Plato said, one of the Greek philosophers, he said, every king should be a philosopher or only philosopher should become a king. You know why? Because kings are very powerful. And they're powerful, and if they are not philosophical, they may cause a lot of damage to the kingdom, to their people. Similarly, we, the modern humans, are very powerful. With our science and technology and economic growth, you know, we can go to the moon, we can send our mission to the Mars, we can drive vehicles very fast, we can fly big vehicles. So we are very powerful, but unfortunate part is we have lost the touch of philosophy. We do not know why we are doing things what we are doing, how we are doing, how long we should be doing. We have no idea. And that is where the problem of the world. For example, all of us want a GDP of the country to grow, right? Do you want GDP to grow? Does anybody know how much to grow? 5% or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 or 15? How much? Nobody knows. Even if I ask this question to Prime Minister of the country, tell Modi ji, bataye desh ka GDP kitna badna chahiye? I don't think Modi ji will have answer. Ha, only thing we know is more the better, right? Jitna jada GDP bade utna acha hai. Par kitna badna chahi nobody knows. You're getting my point? How long GDP should grow? Another 10 years, another 20 years, another 30 years, another 40 years, another 50 years, how many years? No idea. Longer the better. Which means we do not know how much to grow and how long to grow. We are only growing. It is same as driving a vehicle without any brakes. Isn't it? And if you are going to drive a vehicle without any brakes, kya hota hai? Vehicle drive karo without, bina brake ke to kya hota hai? Accident. 
and it looks like modern humans are already going to meet an accident or already met an accident. If you are going to talk, I'm going to stop. Next slide. So it looked like looks like we are already met an accident and we do not know where we are going and that's why I would like to communicate to you about this climate change and many people do not understand. Many means most educated people also do not understand. That's a problem of the world. I keep saying professors, parents, teachers, policy makers, politicians do not understand what condition we are in right now and that's I'm going to try to bring you a sense. So when we say climate change means what? What has changed? Second, why it has changed? Who has changed it? When are we going to correct it? And what you as an individual can do? If you can take these five points away from this talk, I would believe that the time that we are going to spend together is successful. So let me start right away with the point number one. Climate change means what has changed? Anybody, what has changed? Temperature and weather pattern has changed. You know, when we say climate change means the weather pattern has changed. What has changed particularly? That erratic weather situation has increased. You know, there used to be floods. You know, out of the all the floods that happens, the last 10% extreme events is called, uh, last 10% of events are called extreme weather events. 10% of heat is extreme weather heat and last 10% is extreme cold wind. So the extreme events have increased in terms of frequency. So in the decade of 1970 to 79, we had only about 313 extreme flood events, but now it has increased in the last decade to more than 1300. So climate change means this has changed. You know, there was extreme flood event in Pakistan three, four months back. One third of Pakistan was flooded almost 30 billion dollars was a loss and today the condition is you might be following the news that there is a shortage of food that is the impact of erratic weather pattern but not only that there was a floods in bangalore assam australia china japan germany brazil everywhere in the in the world there are floods an extreme level of flood even saudi arabia you google says saudi arabia so many floods are happening in saudi arabia Saudi Arabia is a desert country by the way, you know that? So this has increased. The climate change means frequency and intensity of extreme weather system has increased. Forest fires. Have you heard of Amazon forest fires? Australian forest fire, Greece, Italy, Turkey, Russia, recently UK. Forest fires. Enormous amount of forest fires are taking place earlier. It used to be 28 in that decade and now it has increased five times more, 500% increase in extreme weather condition uh, that is happening. Ice is melting due to the global warming. North Pole and South Pole we have been seeing. You know, very often that you see a newspaper photo, something like this, ice is melting. North Pole and South Pole, enormous amount of ice is melting. Where the ice is going? The ice water after melting is going to the ocean. As a result of that, the ocean levels are increasing. Can you believe it? Ocean is not small water body, right? We say infinite samudra, atha samudra. That itself is increasing. This picture was taken by myself personally. When I visited Odisha, there used to be seven villages here called Saad Bhai. You can Google search. Seven villages that used to be there, not there anymore. The seashore that you see here was two and a half kilometers from this place. And the sea water kept coming in, coming in, coming in, just last 20, 25 years. Now what you see is the, the temple of the village is under the sand. The, the hand pump of the village is under the sand. This is happening right in front of our eyes. It is not some 500 years ago this happened. So this is happening, the sea level is rising at the rate of 3.4 millimeter per year. 3.4 millimeter sea is rising. Understand the enormity of the problem that we have in hand and what is also happening is cyclones and typhoons and all kind of weather system that has uh, not was so common and now it is becoming very, very common. When I went to Odisha, they said earlier once in few years, four or five years, there, there used to be a, a cyclone. Now every now and then there is a smaller big cyclone coming in. Every now and then. So climate change means this has changed. Intensity of extreme 
weather system and in frequency of extreme weather system is changing. All right. I hope the point is clear. Okay, let me come to the second point. Why it has changed? Why such a big change has happened? Well, it has changed because we are consuming energy. A simple reason. And we consume a lot of energy and any, everything is driven by energy in our modern life. Everything. Every second of your life you are consuming energy in one form or other. So much so that there are 17 sustainable development goals defined by United Nations. And center of each of these goals is energy. So whether it is about poverty, hunger, health, education, industrialization, climate change, sustainable consumption, even global peace and partnership has something to do with energy. Global peace and partnership. So whatever is happening in Ukraine has something to do with energy, isn't it? Whatever happened in Iraq earlier has something to do with energy. So global peace and partnership has also connection with energy. So energy is everything and everything is energy. The unfortunate part is we have been using wrong energy or the energy in a wrong way. And this graph is a history of that. It tells you the story what has happened on this planet. This, pla this graph is a pattern of energy consumption on this planet for the last 220 years. Something happened in 1850. What happened in 1850? We, we started to industrialize ourselves. And why it was possible? Because we got coal in our hands. So before 1850, the whole world used to live on renewable energy, biomass, wind, hydro. That was the only source of energy, right? Then we started using coal in 1850. We started using oil in 1900. We started using gas, natural gas in 1950. But look at the growth of energy consumption beyond 1950. How fast it has changed. And today in 2023, when I'm talking to you, we are using biomass, coal, oil, gas, solar, wind, hydro, nuclear, all kind of energy sources we are using. But look at these three portions, the pink, the blue, and, and the gray. These three together itself accounts for almost 85% of the energy that we consume in the world. 85% energy. Coal, oil and gas. So despite so much of development in renewable energy technology, still the world is driven by coal, oil and gas. So what is the problem if it is driven by coal, and coal oil and gas? Is there any problem? Is there any problem? There are many problems. Number one problem is that we don't have it. India is energy poor country. We don't have it. So we have to import energy. For importing energy, we have to you we have to have money. You know, one of the problems in Sri Lanka is that it rains short of money. One of the problems in, uh, in Pakistan, it rains short of money. So we have to have foreign money, dollars. For having foreign money, what do we need to do? Export. For exporting, what do you need to do? Manufacture, produce. And for producing, what do you need? Energy. And energy comes from outside. Look at the vicious cycle we are in. You're getting my point? So it's very dangerous to depend on somebody else so heavily. Right now, there is a problem in Ukraine Iran, uh, and Russia, and it has, it has stopped the supply of gas to Europe. Europe is going through winter and suffering. The European governments are asking people to save, save, save. So why? Because they're dependent. We are also dependent. Whatever happened to them can also happen to us sometime. So that is one problem, but I, I, I believe that's not a very big problem. Prime Minister Modi will take care of it. But the second problem is all these three sources, coal, oil, and gas, is made out of one atom. What is that atom? Carbon. Coal is carbon, petrol is carbon, diesel is carbon, LPG is carbon, CNG is carbon, everything is carbon. So when you burn carbon, this is the equation. Carbon plus oxygen equal to energy plus CO2 carbon dioxide. By any chance, are you responsible for emitting carbon dioxide? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Everybody is emitting carbon dioxide. Everybody, every time. Rich or poor doesn't matter. From developed countries or developing countries doesn't matter. From north or south doesn't matter. Everybody is emitting carbon dioxide. When we run our lights and fans, we emit carbon dioxide. When we cook food, 
we are emitting carbon dioxide. When we travel, we are emitting carbon dioxide. When we wear clothes, we are emitting carbon dioxide. When you brush your teeth, you are emitting carbon dioxide. When you are using this building, the floor, the furniture, the cement, the concrete, the chair, you are responsible for emitting carbon dioxide because the chair, it has taken energy to come to the shape. And because you are using it, you are responsible for that energy and the carbon dioxide emission that has happened. Is the point clear? So everything that we touch in our life has consumed energy and therefore responsible for carbon dioxide emission. Where we emit this carbon dioxide? Where does it go? We emit in the atmosphere, right? We emit, all of us emit carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere as if it is your father's property. Pitaji ka hai? Hello? Father's property? No, grandfather's property, chacha, nana ka property. No, but humko lagta hai father ka property. Hai. We can emit as much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as we want. Nobody has ever told us that there has to be the limit. Because atmosphere is finite, everything is finite. So as a result of this, this graph has followed like this. As a result of this, our carbon dioxide emission and the concentration of carbon dioxide has also followed the similar track. For thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the amount of carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere was constant. Look at this graph. From 1,000, 2,000, uh, uh, 1,200, 1,400 years, it was all flat. But look at last 100, 150 years, ever since we started using coal oil and gas, the level of concentration is increasing. And right now, as I'm talking to you, there is 50% extra carbon dioxide sitting in the atmosphere. How much? 50% extra. So this extra 50% carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, what it is doing there? Upar kya kar rahi carbon dioxide? Upar se manushyon ko bait ke dekh rahi gur gur ke ki manushyon lo kya kar rahi niche? Carbon dioxide is nothing to do with ozone layer. I don't know from where this concept has come. Nothing to do with ozone layer. In fact, ulta ho raha Ozone layer is now repairing getting repaired because it was something to do with the CFC, chlorofluorocarbons that we used to use in our refrigerator. Now that has stopped bend in the world. As a result of that, this, the ozone layer is recovering. Recent NASA reports you can read. So carbon dioxide has nothing to do with ozone layer, but for some reason many people have that connection. But this carbon dioxide has, what is it called, the greenhouse gas. What is it called? And what is the greenhouse gas? The job of the greenhouse gas is to have a greenhouse effect. And what is greenhouse effect? Trapping of the heat. That is the greenhouse effect. So whatever energy that we are consuming today, it is going to result in carbon dioxide emission. That carbon dioxide is going to be there in the atmosphere on an average of 300 years. So the food that we are going to eat today, the, the travel that we are going to make today, how long it is going to have impact? 300 years. What it is going to do for 300 years? Heat up the planet. As a result of that, because of the extra carbon dioxide sitting, sitting in the atmosphere, the temperature of the planet is rising and rising and rising. And it was rising linearly like this yellow curve. But look at the last seven, eight years here. During last seven, eight years, particularly, it has actually left the trajectory and it is almost going exponentially now. Going exponentially. So the temperature is rising and right now as I'm talking to you, the global temperature is increased to something like 1.19 degree centigrade, which is equal to 2.14 degree Fahrenheit. What do you think? It is a big change or small change in temperature? It's a big, big change in temperature. Our body temperature is normally 97, 90 degree at Fahrenheit. When the body temperature increases by 2 degree, it becomes 100 degree. And when body temperature is 100 degree, what we say? Body has got the fever. When the planet's temperature is increased by 2 degree Fahrenheit, can we say planet has got the fever? Yes or no? Yes, yes planet has got the fever, my God. Planet has got the fever. And when you get a fever, what do you do? You take medicine, you take paracetamol. Which paracetamol? Dolo 650, right? 
is there any paracetamol that we can give to our planet? No. When you get fever, what happens? You can't eat properly, you can't sleep properly, you can't work properly, you can't study properly. Similar to that, when planet has got the fever, planet cannot behave properly. Suddenly there are heat waves and cold waves and floods and droughts and sea level rise and snowstorm, all kinds of things are happening. Isn't it? Have you experienced something is wrong? Hello? Summers are becoming hotter, winter, you do not know when it is coming, when it is going. So the planet has lost the balance. It cannot behave properly what it used to behave. So that was the second point. First, climate change means extreme event changing. Number two, why it has changed? Because of the carbon dioxide, extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Is that point clear? The third point, who has changed it? Who has changed the climate? Humans, very nice. You know, whenever I ask this question everywhere, all intelligent, smart, educated people, they say, when I ask question, who has changed the climate, they say, humans have done it, I have not done it. Who has done it? Ha, then they correct themselves, no, no, not humans, we have done it. That is also not correct. Not we have done it. Because when we say we, it's nobody's responsibility. Yes. Who is eating food? You. Who is wearing clothes? You. Who is enjoying the chair? You. Who is traveling? You. So it is every individual who consumes energy caused to the climate change. And therefore a lot of people say government has done it, industry has done it, this has done it, that has done it. But the fact of the matter is every individual directly and indirectly use energy and cause climate change. Directly through the use of food and travel and electricity, indirectly through the clothes, building, road, infrastructure, furniture. So therefore, if I ask question, who has caused the climate change? It is I who has done it, isn't it? In India, we have this uh, story of Panchatantra. It says, once upon a time, there was a person sitting on a branch of a tree and cutting the same branch. What do you call such a person? Sexually, but normally what do you call such a person? Stupid, fool, murk, you know? So when I see this happening in this world, one side, our GDP is increasing, science is increasing, technology is increasing, everything is increasing. On the other side, nature is degrading. Air quality is getting poor, water quality is getting poor, soil is getting poor. This is the nature that nurtures our life without which you cannot live on this planet. Swans ke bina rehe nahi sakte, paani ke bina rehe nahi sakte, khana khane bina rehe nahi sakte. Jiske bina rehe nahi sakte, wo sab ke halat kharaab. So GDP increasing, nature degrading. The question is, is it modernity or stupidity? It looks like a plain stupidity, isn't it? And the next question is, who is stupid? Ah, oh, very nice. Who is stupid? I. I. Aisa nahi ki jo log I nahi bol rahe, wo stupid nahi. Wo bhi hai. Bichare sharma ke bol nahi pa rahe. But what a stupidity of the modern humans that we are degrading the very same nature that nurtures our life. And that's why when I traveled across the world, I found out and I keep telling that the modern humans are the most stupid animal ever existed on this planet. Nobody can be as stupid as we are that we are busy destroying the same thing that that is so essential to nurture our life. You are getting my point? Yes. Very nice. So I am that animal that has created the problem. The fourth point, when are you going to correct the climate change? When do you think we should correct the climate change? You should do it now? Right? As for the climate scientists, they say that we need to ensure that no matter what, the global temperature should not rise 1.5 degrees centigrade above normal. Above normal, normal 1850 reference point. Consider to that, with respect to that, our temperature should not rise 1.5 degree. Why? What is going to happen at 1.5 degree centigrade global temperature rise? What is going to happen? Will there be sudden disaster and everybody will die? Aisa hone wala hai? No. I keep saying, don't worry. Chinta mat karo. Itni asan moth nahi milne wali. You're not going to die so easily. Nature is not going to kill so easily. You know how nature is going to kill us? 
you know, in a movie, how does a dangerous, dangerous villain, how does a dangerous villain kills a hero? Kaise marta hai? Khatarnaak villain hero ko? Tadpa, tadpa ke. To nature humko kaise marne wali hai? Ye thoda jor se bolna chita ki sabko yaad rahe. Nature humko kaise marne wali hai? Tadpa, tadpa ke. And that's what is happening, you know. Sudden heat waves and cold waves which means what? It means that only people are suffering and already there is a loss to the economy in terms of hundreds of billions of dollars, but also there is a loss to the life. Recently in, in, in California, there was a drought five, six months back and recently there was a snowstorm that killed people in as powerful country as America with scientifically advanced, technologically advanced, economically advanced country. So that is what is going to happen at 1.5 degrees centigrade. The change, the climate is, starts to be irreversible. The change in the climate will starts to be reversible, which means what? Beyond 1.5 and up to 2 degrees centigrade. 2 degrees centigrade is the ultimate limit. 2 degrees centigrade and beyond, you will not be able to reverse the climate change. Even if you, all of us become sent and do nothing in this world. You know, sab log sadhu sand ban jayen, wo decide kare ki aaj ki baas sirf langot pen ke jiyenge, phir bhi climate ko reverse nahi kar sakte. Why? It's an irreversible process and I'm sure you must have studied this in thermodynamics. There are processes, most processes are irreversible, you can't reverse it, you cannot reverse this. So therefore, whatever you need to do, you need to do it right now. Is that point clear? You need to do right now. And would you like to do something? To correct the climate? Only 10 people? Would you like to do something? Yes. The problem is we don't have time. Second problem. Even if you wish to do something, we are already running out of time. It depends on how much carbon budget we have. And the carbon budget for one and a half degree centigrade, carbon, what is carbon budget? How much more carbon dioxide you can emit in the atmosphere before we reach the temperature of 1.5 degree centigrade warming. So for 1.5 degree centigrade, the budget is 280 billion tons. And for two degree centigrade, it is about 1000 billion tons. Looks like a very big number, right? But look at the rate at which you are emitting carbon dioxide. Look at the rate. Can you all read this number? How much is, how much is this? 16.7 lakh kilogram of carbon dioxide. In how much time? One second. Just one second. How much is one second? One second. One second. In this much time, 16.7 lakh kilogram out of which 14 lakh kilogram is because of the human activities, 14 lakh kilogram. In just one second, can you imagine the rate at which we are damaging the atmosphere? And that's why when you divide this number by this number, you'll get the time left before we touch global warming of one and a half degree centigrade. What is your guess? How much time is left? Do we have 500 years? 200 years? 100 years? 50 years? 40 years? 30 years? No. As per this clock, taken yesterday, the time left is six years and 192 days only. Six years and 192 days. That's only time <coughs> that is left with us before we touch one and a half degree centigrade of global warming. Just take my water. So, Shall I say congratulations to you for having such a problem? But that's only, that's unfortunate part. It is one of the most important number to the world that we are having so much time. And if at all we want to correct it, IPCC. IPCC means Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. It is one of the most credible body in the world, having membership of 190 plus countries. And it keeps doing lot of research with over 5,000 scientists all across the world from all the countries. They came up with the report and they said, if you really want to solve the problem of climate change, what you need to do is we need to change in energy use pattern. The whole problem is created because of what? Energy, isn't it? Carbon-based energy. So if you want to solve the problem, what you need to do? Change the root cause of the problem, isn't it? If you get a cancer, can you treat the cancer by taking paracetamol, you cannot. 
you need to do chemotherapy so that you can remove the cancerous cells from your body. The root cause has to be removed if you want to solve the problem of ca cancer. Similarly, if the climate has changed, what you need to do is remove the root cause and root cause is carbon emission. So you need to change in energy use pattern. Is that point clear to everyone? But if you want to change, there are two conditions. What is the condition? Number one, the change has to be drastic. <clears throat> How should the change be? Drastic. Small change is not going to help. Is that point clear? Small change is not going to help. It has to be drastic. And, and when should the change happen? Immediately. Not only the change has to be drastic, it has to be immediate. <clears throat> These are the two qualifying conditions if you really want to solve the problem. What are the two qualifying conditions? Drastic and immediate change. The question is, can we really do this? Can we really make a drastic and immediate change? The problem is we are all suffering from the contradiction of our own modern life. Everybody wants a growth, right? All of you want a growth? But a growth requires energy. And 85% energy comes from carbon. That is going to result in carbon dioxide emission. And that is going to cause climate change. Look at the contradiction. So if you really want a growth, it also means climate change will become worse. So if you do you want a growth or you want to solve the problem of climate change? I never understood when answer is so clear why it is difficult for people to tell come and say openly, say that no, it is important to solve the problem of climate change. But I, I, I don't know why people are still shy of saying we want to solve the problem of climate change. I showed you so many things. But I really never understood why it is not strong. Yes, we want to solve the problem of climate change. What are you going to lose? But if you are not going to solve the problem of climate change, you will lose everything. Everything. Because that is how the climate change is now the question of survivability of human life on this planet. Nothing will happen to the planet, by the way. Planet will be here and only thing you will not be able to survive, that is how the conditions will be. Because if you want growth, you need to increase energy supply. If you want to solve the problem of climate change, you need to decrease energy supply. Look at the contradiction. And I keep telling that if anybody who can solve this problem should not get just one or two Nobel Prizes, he should get eight to ten Nobel Prizes. Such a huge problem. It's a problem of existence of human being on this planet. Any one of you want a Nobel Prize, by the way? Okay, very nice. Couple of people. Why don't we clap for all those brave people who are raising their hand? So anyone, anyone in any time in your life, if you feel that I've done a lot, I have to do some good work, I have to get some Nobel Nobel Prize, then what do you want to do? This one. Ensure that there is a growth without affecting climate change. You are getting my point? Ensure that there is a growth without affecting climate change. When you do this, then you are really solving the problem because it is survival of human life. So according to me, the drastic and immediate change would be following. If you really want to move away from carbon-based source drastically and immediately, what we can do? What is our ultimate source of energy? Solar energy. So what we need to do is we need to move to solar energy 100%. Not 99 percent. Is that point clear? Not 99, 100 percent. Before 1850, our lives used to run 100 percent on renewable energy. We have to come back to the solar energy 100 percent, not 99 percent. And it is indeed possible. I did my PhD in solar energy. It is indeed possible that you can run everything 100 percent on solar. My bus runs on solar. I created a school in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, it's a 14-acre campus in Bhikangao. Hargon district, there are more than 1,000 students and we built it in 2010. But since 2010 till today, there is no electricity connection. 100% school runs on solar energy. So it is very much possible that we switch our life to 100% solar energy. And we have to do it drastically. If all of us surrenders connection, now that is a condition. Not only switch to solar, but how do we switch to solar? Without connection. Surrender your electricity connection. If you all do that, Will it become a drastic change? Yes. yes. And what is the second condition? Immediate. Immediate. So we should do this when? 
immediately now you got the point very nice so when you go home today do one thing write a love letter what do you need to do write a love letter to whom electricity board of maharashtra what do you need to write you need to write dear electricity board so far i have been taking electricity from you but finally my eyes are opened and i realize that from today i would generate my own electricity and therefore i do not need your connection kindly take your connection back thank you very much yours truly will you all going to write this hello if not today write this month okay if not this month write this year at least if not this year write within 2 years 3 years 4 years 5 years as soon as possible switch your life 100% on solar as soon as possible will you all going to do that yes. sometime in your life i want to see the raised hands those who are listening to me online can also raise the hand very nice so please do this this is what ultimately we need to do this by the way how many of you are using solar energy right now 1% 2 3 4 5 6 okay very bad how many of you are eating food every day some people have doubt whether they eat food every day or not <laughs> they are not even raising their hands but tell me one thing is it possible to grow food without using solar energy is it possible no we need solar energy to grow food which we are eating every day so if you are eating food means you are using solar energy yes or no are you breathing all the time can we produce oxygen without solar energy no. so if you are breathing means you are using solar energy are you drinking water every day yes. can we run a water cycle without solar energy no. no so if you are drinking water means you are using solar energy right so let me ask once again how many of you are using solar energy wow what a revelation in your life today right aaj aapko pata chali gaya ki aap solar energy ko upyog karte hain bahut sare log bichare bina jaane hi mar jate hain पता ही नहीं चलता जीवन भर की आवर एग्जिस्टेंस इज सोलर एनर्जी वी सर्वाइव बिकॉज ऑफ सोलर एनर्जी नो लिविंग क्रिएचर ऑन दिस प्लैनेट कैन सर्वाइव विदाउट यूजिंग सोलर एनर्जी इज एंट इट सो इफ माई फैन रन ऑन सोलर इफ माई किचन रन ऑन सोलर इफ माई लाइट रन ऑन सोलर वॉट्स अ बिग डील बट वी हैव मेड इट अ वेरी बिग डील वी फील दैट यूजिंग सोलर इन समथिंग वाओ नो इट हैज टू बी द मोस्ट कॉमन थिंग इन आवर लाइफ बिकॉज वी ऑल survive anyway using solar energy is the point clear but we have to be careful be very careful because modern humans are expert we are all expert in you know what solving one problem and creating see everybody knows this solve one problem create another solve one problem create another we are super expert in doing that and if you are going to use solar energy blindly i guarantee you 20 years down the line 30 years down the line you are again going to suffer because of overuse of solar energy what are you going to do with the recycling where are you going to dump your panels what will happen to the batteries all kind of question will come therefore what i have done is i made two fundamental laws of human existence a big thing i am telling if humans have to want to survive on this planet you must follow these two fundamental laws what are the two fundamental laws number 1 limit your consumption losses in an ecosystem of finite resources there has to be finite consumption why why there should be finite consumption if i have a lot of money why shouldn't i use as much as i want for a very simple thing you know gandhi said mahatma gandhi said that there is enough in the world for everyone's need not for anyone's greed why did he say that because for <coughs> the size of the planet is fixed and finite if our population becomes double and triple can we all come together and and stretch and make our planet bigger can we can we increase water on the planet soil on the planet minerals on the planet nothing can be increased everything is fixed and finite only this modern humans think that oh oh no no our gdp should increase our production should increase consumption should increase is that really possible everything you derive from a fixed body the body itself is a fixed how can you grow continuously it's not possible you are getting my point then the question is how come we are growing 5% 6% 7% gdp rate how come we are growing i keep telling 
there's only one way we can grow in this manner when we start stealing things jab chori karenge to possible hai is tarah ka growth aap log chori karte hain hello no very nice acha let us understand what is chori right so when you take 100 rupees from someone and give it back what do we say i have borrowed money right udhar liya tha when you take 100 rupees from someone and never give it back kya bolenge what have, what you done chori badmashi gaban right so we the modern human with our science and technology what we are doing is we are stealing for example with the tube well technology you know we have learned how to take water from underground but have you learned how to put water back no is the water table in the country going down yes if water table is going down can we say that we are stealing water pani ki chori kar rahe yes or no और जो चोरी करता है उसको क्या बोलते हैं चोर और चोर कौन है हम नहीं आए अभी तो मना कर रहे थे बट दैट इज एग्जैक्टली द होल वर्ल्ड इज ग्रोइंग बिकॉज वी आर ऑल स्टीलिंग थिंग्स फ्रॉम आवर ओन फ्यूचर वी हैव नॉट पुट वाटर बिनीथ दैट वी कैन टेक वी हैव नॉट प्लांटेड ट्रीज इन द फॉरेस्ट दैट वी कैन कट वी हैव नॉट क्रिएटेड द सॉइल दैट वी कैन डिस्ट्रॉय इट इज नॉट अवर्स in the modern human has forgotten and it started treating that it is all ours then that's why we are behaving like this so rule number 1 is limit your consumption rule number 2 localize your production localize it what does it mean whatever once you limit your consumption localize your production produce it locally because whenever you are going to produce it centrally it is always going to result in unequal distribution in unequal distribution means inequity inequity means वायलेंस इन द वर्ल्ड जब भी दुनिया में असमानता बढ़ेगी अशांति बढ़ेगी वायलेंस बढ़ेगा एंड लुक व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन लास्ट थर्टी फोर्टी इयर्स साइंस इज ग्रोइंग टेक्नोलॉजी इज ग्रोइंग इकोनॉमी इज ग्रोइंग इज ब्रदरहुड आल्सो ग्रोइंग ब्रदरहुड ग्रोइंग नो इज द लव बिटवीन पीपल ग्रोइंग नो आई डोंट सी इज द वायलेंस ग्रोइंग यस वायलेंस इज ग्रोइंग वाई बिकॉज आवर मॉडल फॉर इकोनॉमी इज समथिंग रॉन्ग इट क्रिएट्स दैट गैप एंड इट इज इट एक्चुअली you know encourage violence in the world so two things limit your consumption localize your production if you really want to consume water limit your consumption don't waste localize your production means recharge yes if you really want to wear clothes limit your consumption means don't fill your cupboards with the clothes and use local locally fabricated clothes if you really want to eat food do not waste limit your consumption and use local food as much as possible and the most dangerous thing that we consume is energy so if you really want to use the energy rule number 1 is limit your consumption rule number 2 is localize your production if you are not going to follow this two rule i guarantee you can write on the walls today human life cannot survive on this planet so fourth number point is we have to do it take an action right now and the manner we have to take the action is by limiting consumption and localizing production okay that brings me to the last point the fifth point what an individual can do who has caused the climate change i so who should solve it only i should solve it isn't it so and the manner to solve it is by energy because energy has created the entire problem right so what we need to do is we need to rethink and redesign our energy systems we cannot follow and continuously use the energy system that we are doing right now we need to read think and redefine we need to become more solar powered but even to become a solar power there has to be a proper approach and that approach i call it is amg approach avoid minimize generate approach amg approach okay so step number 1 is if you want to switch to solar step number 1 is avoid the use of energy as much as possible even if it is solar energy avoid the use of solar energy also you know i am a professor of solar energy brand ambassador of solar energy for the government of madhya pradesh my job is to promote solar energy but what i am saying the first rule of using solar energy is not to use solar energy why because there is no manufacturing in this world which does not have side effect it is impossible anything that you do will have impact on the environment if you brush your teeth it will have impact on the environment anything that you do is going to have impact 
So solar energy means you have to you know, mine silicon and make silicon material and make solar cell and then make module. And for making module, you need require glass, you require aluminum frame, you require wire, you require structure. And for installing module, you need iron, then you need cable, and you need electronics to process the power. And then only you can make use of solar energy. And then also you need to recycle after 20 years, 30 years. That also going to take more energy, more chemicals. And therefore, the best thing to do in life is to do what? Do nothing, you know? Avoid. Because by doing things, we are creating so many problems in the world. Avoid. How can you avoid the use of energy? How can we avoid use of energy? By not using it, right? For example, I have stopped ironing my clothes. We can all do this. It is really non-essential activity. If all of us starts wearing non-iron clothes, is something going to change in the world? Nothing will change. But we are going to save carbon dioxide emission. Isn't it? And recently we launched the campaign called CCD Challenge, Climate Correction Day Challenge. What we have uh, you know, invited people to wear non-iron clothes and some 3.5 lakh people have taken part, including some corporates. So that is the best thing to do. I have, I have stopped wearing their clothes. You can also do that. In fact, a polity can make a rule that you know, one particular day in the week, you will not allow students to enter with iron clothes. And student means faculty also. Is that a good idea? Maybe more days, right? More than one day. Or maybe the entire week. That's even better. I'll take Father Paul, I'll tell Father Paul not to do this because, see, if everybody is wearing non-iron clothes, that becomes a normal part of life. That becomes a new fashion. And we have to create a new fashion which is environment friendly. So do this. What else we can avoid? How we can avoid? At my home at IIT Bombay, there is no refrigerator. There is no geyser. There is no air conditioner. We can live without it, isn't it? We should avoid use of all this. Why? Because use of refrigerator for one day results in one unit of electricity consumption. And one unit of electricity consumption results in one kilogram of carbon dioxide emission approximately. And one kilogram of carbon dioxide emission is going to be there in the atmosphere for how many years? 300 years. So a one day comfort of use of refrigerator is a discomfort for how many years? 300 years, my God. Only one day comfort, one good bath with the hot water with the geyser is going to impact somebody for 300 years. Who is going to impact? Not I, I will die, you know. I to 300 years nahi rehne wala hai. I to mar jayega. Who is going to bear this? 10 generations. 300 years means 10 generations, right? Kiska 10 generations? Your own. Padosi ka nahi. Tumare khud ke bache, nati, poti are going to bear this for 10 generations what you are going to do today. That's why it's very, very important to do avoid. Have you heard prevention is better than cure? Prevention is always 100 times better than cure. Using solar energy is like a cure. Not using any energy is prevention. So best thing you can do is prevent. Don't use energy. Avoid. Got it? If you cannot avoid, the next best thing is minimize the use of energy by another one third. How do I minimize? Use efficient appliances. For example, if you replace normal light with LED light, we save a lot of energy, half of the electricity, half of carbon dioxide emission. If you save normal fan with the BLDC fan replace, then we save a lot of energy. The new fan, BLDC, brushless DC motor fans, consume only 25 to 30 watt as compared to the normal induction motor fan, which is about 60, 70 watt. Right? So minimize, use efficient appliances, five star rated. Use of refrigerator should be avoided, but if you cannot avoid, what is the next best thing to do? Minimize. How do you minimize refrigerator? Don't buy two doors and three doors and four doors refrigerator, you know. These rest people are trying to make a room inside the refrigerator. Don't do this. Make, buy a small refrigerator for your critical needs and buy a five-star rated refrigerator. Then it is going to have a big impact. Use of air conditioner should be avoided, but if you cannot avoid it, minimize it. How do I minimize it? By making smaller room because 
what AC is doing, AC is going to cool your roof and your floor and your walls and your furniture and everything. And finally, AC is going to cool your small body of two feet by six feet, right? So for a small body, you're cooling everything. You know, what a Bhattami's use of AC? That we cool everything for such a small body. So be careful and minimize the use of energy. And if you cannot avoid minimize, if you cannot minimize, then the last option is generate. How much you should generate? Only one third. Then you are really doing good. Generate only one third and that to locally. Generate one third energy locally only. Then you are doing something good. Locally means on your own rooftop. Whatever energy needs of this building should come from this building. Whatever energy needs of your house should come from your own house only. You do not need electricity connection then you are really sustainable. So I hope all of you are going to remember this rule. Yes. AMG, yes. will you all? Yes. A means? Avoid. avoid. M means? Minimize. Minimize. And G means? Generate. Generate. How much? One third. one third, one third, one third. And if you are not going to follow AMG rule, you will have to say OMG, oh my God. Solar energy is expensive. Oh my God, rooftop space is not there. Oh my God, policy is not there, subsidy is not there. All kind of excuses will come to you if you're not going to follow this rule. So when you do all this, then it becomes energy swaraj. Then it becomes energy independence, energy atmanirbhata. Even our prime minister said in the last to last independence speech, he said, if India has to become atmanirbhar, it is important that we become atmanirbhar in energy because we are spending 12 lakh crore rupees every single year in importing energy, 12 lakh crore rupees. So the first thing you, why should become Atmanirbhar is because that is the best contribution you can make for the country because your country doesn't have to import for you then. Country doesn't have to spend foreign exchange. So being energy independent or adapting to energy Suraj is most powerful thing that can happen in this world and energy Suraj is not required for one country, not only for India, but every country in the world should adopt to energy Suraj. And in 2019, uh, we have taken part in international competition, global competition, and presented this idea with uh, more, more than 450 teams taking part. So we were the winner in the national level, we were the winner at the Asia level, and in the final round there were three teams from each continent, 21 teams in a global round. We have beaten all the teams and we were the winner of the global grand prize uh, of 100,000 US dollar. I have donated that money and created this Energy Swaraj Foundation. And the whole... And the whole purpose of this foundation to establish Energy Swaraj, not only in India, but all over the world. I also believe that it is impossible for any government, however powerful the government is, it is impossible for any government to solve the problem of climate change. It is already too late. And governments are elected for a short time, four years and five years. They have limited time, they have limited resources, and this is a long-term approach we have to adopt. So everybody has to take part. Every individual has to take part in solving the problem. Anyway, everybody has contributed to the problem, right? So uh, when, when there will be a public moment, then we will be able to solve the problem. And when will be the public moment? When every one of us start taking pride in saying that, I do not have electricity connection at home. connection Then it becomes a, a movement. And it should be done very proudly. When you say that I do not have Refrigerator, my, I am wearing, you know, no iron clothes. When you make low energy consumption as a fashion of your life, then really the movement will happen. And we have to really do this. As I said, at my home, there is no fridge, no, there is no geezer, there is no refrigerator. I am still, you know, happy, family. And I do not wear iron clothes. And we also decided that uh, I have two daughters. And whenever my daughters will get married, in their marriage function, we are going to invite only those people who come without ironing their clothes. Wow. And anybody, anybody who comes with iron clothes will say namaste kalana. <laughs> Let us make it as a fashion. And you all, and most of you are sitting here are also unmarried, right? So, <laughs> so why don't you do this? Why don't you make it as a fashion? Because it's for you only, right? All those people in the front row, those who are in 40s and 50s and 60s, they are going to not be there in the planet another 20, 30 years, right? They are going to go somewhere. 
Who are going to stay back? All of you are going to stay back. And you are the one who are going to suffer more. So why don't you make it as a fashion? Will you all do that? Yes. You will not marry until unless your in-laws agrees that we are all going to wear non-iron clothes. And this is the only just an example. And there can be so many other things you can do. Great. Will you all do that? Yes. Wow. I need, to, I need to record this because, you know, I, I need to record this so that I can tell people. Can I do that? I'll make a video. All right, so I'm going to ask you and then you're going to say. So are you all going to arrange your marriage function without ironing, uh, without wearing iron clothes? Yes. All of you? Yes. Wow, this is the new generation and the new generation is going to change the world for the better. Thank you so much. Why don't you clap for yourself? Very nice. So this is why I am spending so much time with the young generation because young generation can change this. So let us create a fashion, let us create a public movement. And there are many things that we can do as an action. And I would like to, uh, Dr. Gole to take note of it. I will spend little more time after this. What we need to do is everybody should become energy literate. Look at what is written on my shirt. Can you read? I'm energy literate, are you? No, you're not. You do not understand where energy is coming, where it is going, how much you as an individual contributing to the carbon dioxide emission, what is status of climate change, how I can reduce, how I can switch to solar energy, right? But would you like to become energy literate? Yes. I believe that energy literacy is a license to use energy. And until unless you have this license, you should not use energy because unknowingly you are going to create problem for yourself and for the world. This is a three hours program available on this. But Paloti can register as a partner with your own logo as I was explaining. Share a link with every student and then you can uh, help uh, becoming energy literate. And I think once you become energy literate, automatically your behavior towards energy consumption is going to change very significantly. All of you are also invited to become a volunteer. I know you, once you go to our this portal, all of you can note, take a note of it, es-pal.org. Energy Suraj, Portal for Action and Learning. There's a hyphen in between. So when you go to this portal, you can, uh, you can become volunteer. So you become energy literate. You create your own link. Unique link will be created. Your own dashboard will be created if you become volunteer. And then you, with that unique link, you can invite anybody in the world to do the energy literacy. And if anybody does energy literacy through your unique link, that will be counted in your account. So do this, right now there are a lot of incentives we are giving people and institution to become energy literate. This is the challenge we have done last time. Now we are every first Wednesday of the month we throw a new challenge, first Wednesday of the month. So the next month, February, the first Wednesday is on first February, the challenge that we are now making is, no, no iron class is on four January. The challenge is become energy literate. Become energy literate by first February. Will you all do that? Very nice. Please do that. I've written a book uh, on Energy Swaraj. If anybody wants to get more details and how this idea came and what happened, you can read this. At the end, I would like to summarize with all of us together. Are you all ready? Yes. What I've done is I've created a three fill in the blanks and uh, you need to fill the blanks I will one by one. So I'm going to display one by one and you let's see who does it first. Ready? Here is the number one. Change. Climate is not changing. Climate has change. already changed. We can all experience it. We can all feel it that climate has changed. Very nice. Number two. Who has caused the climate change? I. I have done it because I am the one who is consuming energy and material and through energy and material I am causing climate change. And number three. Who will be the sol solving the climate change? I will be solving because it is my life and at least for, it is my duty towards me at least to make a better and beautiful world so that we can live. At the end, uh, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, all of you to do the energy literacy through this training. At the end, I would like to say one last point that let's, let us start taking drastic and immediate action. And if you are not going to take a drastic and immediate action, it is estimated that by the end of this century, which is 78 years from now, 
the global temperature will rise to minimum 2.8 degree centigrade up to 6 degree centigrade. This is the latest report. Minimum 2.8 degree. Right now the change in temperature is only 1.1 and that itself has created so much of chaos in the world and so much of disaster. Imagine what will happen at 2 degree, 2.8, 3 degree, 4 degree, 5 degree. There's a big question mark whether human life will survive or not. And those who are going to survive in what shape and size we are going to survive. So therefore, let us take action right now. If you're not going to take, we say that once upon a time, there were dinosaurs on the planet. They are not there anymore. They got extinct from the planet, right? So if you're not going to behave and take action, it may happen that 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years down the line, a new species will come on the planet and they will say, once upon a time there were humans on the planet. Oh my God, what are we talking about in this beautiful morning? But our experience, our data tells us that we are actually heading into that direction. So before it is too late, let us take action right now so that we create a better and beautiful world. So with this note, thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. <clears throat>
Good morning, one and all present over here. I am Dr. Dinesh Wankhede. I am propo proposing a vote of thanks uh, for this particular event. Uh, sir, uh, I don't want to call it as a vote of thanks. Uh, just vote of thanks. I would like to salute you. I would like to salute your passion for the cause. And I would like to salute all the people who are associated with the Energy Swaraj Foundation, who are associated. Sir, uh, last time also you came here and last time also I have proposed vote of thanks, but uh, I missed out on one, uh, on few people. I must salute uh, your family members also because they are sparing you to, for this cause. So wherever they are, they, if they are listening to this one, we are on uh, doing it YouTube live. I would like to thank uh, your family members also. And it is really honor, it is our honor and our privilege that you are in our campus for the second time. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I thank uh, uh, Director Father Paul, Dr. Father Paul Chandran Kundal for uh, giving this opportunity to the first year uh, that we could uh, organize this event. I, I thank uh, our principal, Dr. Surendra Gorefar, for helping us to arranging the things and supporting this event. I would like to thank my team members, uh, Mr. Atish Gaur, sir, Mamta Chabriya, madam. And then I would like to thank uh, Ashish Bodhi sir also because he is arranging the things there in my absence. This uh, YouTube live is going on in all classes, right? And uh, I would like to thank to you also, my dear students, for patient listening and maintaining decorum. Those who are listening, you listening me and sir uh, in the classrooms. Uh, I would like to thank my non-teaching staff members and technical support also. Uh, for uh, uh, arranging these things in on a very short notice and sir we we uh, promise you that we uh, most of the th students from the first year will be energy volunteer uh, sooner than later thank you very much sir thank you thank you and sir uh, we will definitely uh, convert this passion uh, into a fashion so we will definitely fix up a day on which we will be reporting to the institute with non-iron clothes. Uh, shall we? Shall we do it? Yes. Let us fix the day today itself. Our principal sir is here only. He is going to give us permission. Monday or Friday? Okay. See, le le let us not the let us not destroy the effect of ironing which we had earlier in the morning by spoiling it today, isn't it? See, energy anyway we have spent on it, so let's enjoy that energy. We can resolve for tomorrow onwards, okay? Uh, all, <laughs> all of us are invited to see the bus. It's a venture and really I, I, I cannot uh, say anything about Dr. Solanki. Look at one life, one mission, 11 years. 11 years resolved to be in the bus, move around the country four, five times, and then only spreading a message and which we find difficult to catch it, hold it, and assimilate. For the message spreading, he is spending 11 years of life. And for actually executing on, on our side, we may not require more than 10 minutes a day. Now, therefore, we have to respond. Otherwise, what will happen? Such moments will not gather the mass. I think we should magnify this particular moment as the other girl says, sir, what alone if I do, what will happen? Nothing. As a Pallot Engineering College, we will do it. Let other colleges follow or otherwise. Isn't it? It's a big magnification from our side. We have to do it. Okay? So I invite all of you to see the bus, have a photograph with Dr. Solanki, interact over there, see the arrangements over there, get inspired to go ahead with one life, one mission in everybody's life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now kindly rise for the national anthem. Jana gana mana adina. Shubha Shishama 
but you can you may visit bus right now after this program now program is uh, concluded but uh, please maintain discipline now, right now there are 300 students first uh, these 300 students will go and then i will allow the students who are witnessing online from their classes so please maintain discipline because bus is very small only 10 people or 15 people may uh, take the round at one time and others will wait so please maintain discipline do you assure me that discipline will be maintained decorum will be maintained <laughs> bus is parked right in front of the block b parking it please uh, visit bus and then uh, uh, follow the instructions given by the aarti sir thank you okay so we all cannot go at the same time okay so are you are So just just hold down for a minute. Hello.